All right, welcome back, guys. We're our first video of this year, Firewatch for the PlayStation 4. I'm here today with Bayo 2. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. So let's start a new game. Uh, so let's go to an empty one because on one of them already uh, finished. So let's do no number two. Ready? I'm ready. Here we go. We're gonna have to be a lot of reading on the very beginning, so make sure you're loud enough, okay. right? Because it's just text, and I hate text, so we're gonna oh, go ahead yeah. and read it. So. So, as you can see, it's gonna start in 1975. Okay. Here we go. You see Julia. And basically they're, they're showing you that you can make choices on this thing. Oh. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and graduates from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. I am drunk. So... Was your, you know, major or you, you're pretty? Are you asking me that? There's two options. Let's say you, you're oh. pretty. They're introducing you to the fact that you're going to oh, make yeah. decisions. That's cool. Uh, you're pretty. She says, Coley. Go ahead. You want me to read it? Okay. You're pretty, she says, Coley. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a, a waiter, and one week later, you and Julia, boyfriend. You're Julia's boyfriend. So basically what we're reading is a series of, series of flashbacks. Here oh, okay. is now us in the present. Okay. Oh, okay. You date for one for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. Let's go one on one. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gently eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's bad butt. So do we pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket? Or do you adopt the Shepherd and name him Mayhem? Um, I say the beagle. All right. I already played this, so I'm kind of giving you choices here. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. 1979. You talked out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asked. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. So that will be pretty cool or one day, why rush? One day, why rush? She looks away out towards the mountains. We have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. Don't worry, you assure her. 
You tell her she has the body of an undergrad. My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says, laughing it off. One day, okay? Okay, one day, she says. Six, was, six months later, you get engaged, lying in bed on a Sunday morning. Yeah, so this is like, a, so we can play the whole game with this hat. We can. Oh, I just dropped it. All right, so we're gonna put it on. All right, first time I didn't found it, so. Oh. <laughs> no fireworks. There's the map. Let's go. Do you ever get to see like what the guy looks like? Mm, yeah. Nineteen eighty. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad or you ignore her? Um, ignore. So we ignore her. There you go. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. <clears throat> 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man or you uh, frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Pose and flex. Pose and flex. This is about the most tedious thing in the whole game, the very beginning where there's all this reading going on. After oh, that, okay. it's going to pick up really quick. Yeah. So, All right, so we look awesome. So just bear with us. Somehow this is relevant, so there is not going to be any more reading going on after this, so. Okay. I guess they're just trying to introduce you the fact or their background anyways. Mm. So, like I said, uh, uh, as long as we get past this reading, it's going to pick up like a mother, so. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. B, B, I, Ba, F, D, D, Dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You come. You confront the attacker. Um, you scare him away or you beat his face in? Beat him. Beat him. <laughs> Your arm gets cut cut up, but you beat the guy um, to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julie asks to take a different path from that day forward. You said, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Nineteen eighty-four. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, two thousand miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not convince her not to take the job or agree if she commutes back and forth. Agree. Agree. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it for she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985, Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. 
she lost, lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had uh, happily loaned them to him just two days prior. So she doesn't remember that she let him borrow it. She was found crying in the stairwell. Okay, the choices. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it or you make macaroni and drink one and try to forget about it. Um, you say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. All right, we should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. So these choices uh, are in force on us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we are in the woods. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987, Julian's affliction gets worse. She can remember things in class. Her research is in uh, shambles. She drives her car to the next uh, town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on a permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family their crush and... Uh, oh, because their family doesn't know. You tell her family their crush and being to make trips to and from their homes in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to bring to brighten her the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. So here's the decision. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility or you are determined to take care of her by yourself? Determined. Determined. Let's go. That would suck. <laughs> yeah, it would, right? And apparently, I mean, they're very young. I mean, they're yeah. like 41, I think, mm -hmm. when she got that dementia, so... It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can do anything without her, and she can do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college, basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Uh, while you're gone. Uh, you put a chair in front of the bedroom door or you trust that she sleeps like a rock. Trust that she sleeps like a rock. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl S S Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Shayla, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. So you're looking forward to getting out, mm -hmm. just so you don't have to be there. Uh, 1989, one night, um, you're a stop at a DUI checkpoint. You blow at point 0.10 and, and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Suzanne. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. 
Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. And we take it. So have we been in unemployed? <laughs> What's going on here? I don't know. <laughs> All right. So whatever. Here we go. I think the reading's over, so. So they finally take their wife to Australia, mm -hmm. Julia, and here we are on a summer job. Enter the lookout tower. I'm really interested in like seeing what this game is going to bring. Because so I know that, like you said, it was like, you know, pretty good and stuff. Yeah, you know, I didn't know anything about this game. And uh, so when I started playing it, like there was a, I think I beat it in two days because I couldn't uh, stop playing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, it, it picks up real quick, so. All right, so let's turn the power on. Finally, voice. At mm -hmm. first, I thought it was going to be one of those games you had to read the whole oh, time, and I was yeah. like, oh, dude, no. <laughs> and we're going to get like uh, chances to reply, but they're going to be so quick, I'm just going to pick whatever, okay? Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... That's her, by the way. Over there. Oh. Forever. Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Okay, uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. But nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Oh, is that it? Close. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> You probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to... Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are those fucking fireworks? Whoa, that's right illegal, cool. right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set him straight. 
Do I write him a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Secure. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's go. Uh, oh, there's a hat. Let's put that on. So if you wouldn't have grabbed that in the very beginning, would it not be there? Yeah, it would have been gone. Uh, actually, I find out at the end of it, they said, like, oh, there was a hat over there. And uh, this game, like, deals with a lot of, like, hit, uh, head west, nor mm -hmm. uh, uh, southeast, and stuff like that. And it's, it gets very confusing. So um, I'm going to do my best to stay on track. Okay. okay. I'm, like, really bad with, like, all the different, like, north, south, east, west, so <laughs> I'm probably going to be no help. Yeah, trust me, it's, uh, and, uh, this is not where we're heading, I was just, uh, when you see stuff like this, you, you trigger, uh, 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 conversations with her. Oh, that's cool. So it's, uh, just the outhouse then, in terms of going to the bathroom? You're a man, Henry, you can go wherever you want. Well, number one at least. And, uh, full disclosure, I pee wherever I want as well. So this generator, it's all the power I've got out here. Yep, it doesn't go through much gas, and, well, you don't have much in the way of electronics, so... What about my hair dryer? Oh, I'm sorry. You might just have to make peace with frizzy locks. I could never. Burn down again. That was a lot of dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> and how do we wind up again by the tower? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long game, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is it. Yeah, it is. Stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this thing sucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, I think we're heading to the right direction. Yes. Yeah, here we go. What the crap? It's that easy, but yet it took so long just to find it. <laughs> oh my god. All right, so. I found the supply box. Great. So we're running around in circles for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so lame. And we were talking about that, that they needed to have a map on the on the corner mm -hmm. uh, because you have to pull out the map. But the good thing is every time that we find these cachy boxes, uh, we'll mark the paths and, and routes that we can take. Oh. So instead of just going blind... We can actually look in and see the paths that we can actually take and cannot oh, take. Okay, that's cool. Finding those paths are different. Hey, I found a note to a guy named Ron from some guy Dave. That's probably Dave Gaskell. He's completely nuts. Is that right? Harmless, but yeah. One of those, you know, fall off the grid and eat ants for a week type. Totally fucking cuckoo. Which is kind of what the job attracts. So the reason why we're, there are not going to be a lot of notes that we're going to find, but the mm -hmm. ones that we will, we're going to read just because this whole game is about the story. Okay. Right. And what we find and stuff. Uh, okay. It's not going to be like any other games that The Last of Us where you have a set of a story and uh, the, other, the other things are optional. You mm -hmm. really want to read all these things. So go right ahead. Okay. 7786. Ron. Hey man, guy couldn't take it, so I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked. Hiking into the park, but let's get when I'm back, Dave. 
All right, so. Hey, there's a snack in here. You're probably gonna eat it. You definitely do not want to do that. Whatever's in there has been in there for years. That's how you get food poisoning. I tracked down that rope. It was right where you said. Great. So you should be set to get down to the lake. Let me look at the map again. Let me figure out where are we. Okay. All Wait, right. so what are we going to use the rope for? Uh, there's a drop oh, okay. uh, where we're hitting. And uh, we're going to use that rope to go okay. down. Wherever it is that we're hitting. Now I saw that the thing split on two, so I don't even know if we're going to the right path. Are those the fireworks? Yeah, we had to follow the fireworks. You see them? No, I don't see them. I can only hear them. That's where we just Jesus were. Christ. <laughs> my, God. my God, I'm telling you, this game is something else. <laughs> okay, the first the first uh, 20, 30 minutes is going to be like this. Um, and, and I'm sure after this, it's going to be more... Uh, lean forward so okay uh, this shale slide is steep how do you expect me to get down this i don't remember it being that bad it's not even named on our topos it should be called cripple gulch just east of gonna pee in a bag forever flats oh is that absorca indian maybe maybe creek uh, it's actually english for not in my job description how do you expect me to get down this <laughs> well did you get that rope uh, no i didn't well go back and get it if you break your leg on your first day, I will not be pleased. Did you not get the rope? I totally thought that I did. All right, and we're back, and now this time we got the rope. I guess I just <laughs> looked at it, and I just got, uh, I just got excited with the granola bar. <laughs> so I left the rope yeah. behind. So let's go. Ready? I'm ready. All right, there's the fireworks, and let's go. Gosh. Yeah, the rope just called us fat, so. <laughs> hey. What the hell's wrong with you? Uh, Cripple Gulch got me. What exactly happened? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. Think you'll have to pee in a bag for the rest of your life? No, I think I'll make it. Be careful for Christ's sake. It is a hell of a nice camping spot down here by the lake. I haven't been down there in years, but yeah, Jonesy Lake area is perfect. All right, so here we go. Finding a bunch of empty beer cans. They threw them all over hell. The idiots down at the lake? Yeah, them. I just found where they're hanging out. Busted. Yep. <laughs> oh, look, they decided to have a campfire, too. You know, they color-coded the fire danger signs in case people were illiterate. But I guess that doesn't take into account just plain stupid, does it? Take their backpacks around. Up here. <laughs> yeah. Fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. There's the fireworks. Everybody the fireworks. feel like we grabbed it and just like join them. Uh, like well, <laughs> confiscate them. We just did. What do you know? People with shitty manners drink shitty beer. You don't like a cold muskwell light on a hot day? No, no, I do. But then again, I didn't say my manners were any good. Better than these fucking litter bugs, though, that's for sure. Well, they left their clothes out to dry. It looks like uh, two people 
So, what if they're naked? Won't that be exciting? Look, they're obviously still there, so tell them off and then head back. I found a bra. A nudie pyromaniac. Remain professional. Uh, there are, uh, panties. There are what? I don't want to say that word again. Why, because you're 12? <laughs> like your music. Yeah. There's a... Ooh. Yes? There are two naked ladies out here. Can you handle that? Come on, I like naked ladies, same as anyone, but there's, you know... Two? Yeah. I know this will be tough for you, but try to pick your tongue up off the ground and do your job. Okay. I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping? Yeah. Enjoy dealing with that. Alright, so we made it in here with these people are causing problems. Yeah. And we'll stop it for right now. We'll be okay. back tomorrow so we can deal with these people and we can get familiar with the map. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we need to work on that. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back tomorrow with Firewatch Part 2. See you guys later.